Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, we are going to actually be testing out yet another question that you all have out there. Can you hard surface weld a Harbor Freight anvil and will that improve things any better? So if it's your first time to the channel, welcome. Hopefully this content uh, is enjoyable for you and you'll consider subscribing. So to answer the question, yes, you can hard surface a Harbor Freight anvil or a cast iron anvil here. The second question that's going to come up with that, that you have to make, you have to make the decision for yourself is, is it worth it to do so? I hope to illustrate to you whether it would be or wouldn't be depending on your particular situation. So in total, I have about two pounds of welding rod into the face of this, about a pound maybe just to fuzz over a pound of 6013 welding rods. We'll get into the reason why here in a moment and roughly a pound of hard facing rod. Now I could do a double layer on this, but I chose in this particular application to just do one singular layer to keep it as true to the original form as possible. Plus there's some risks with going with a second layer. So, why the 6013 up front? You have got to take and build up a base layer. I thought I was using 7014, looked at the rods, they actually ended up being 6013. They were some extra rods that had gotten mixed in. So with the 7014 rods, so I just continued with 6013. Now, 6013, plenty good enough. Uh, it actually welded really well to the cast itself. That being said though, the initial weld on the cast is going to be porous. It's going to be nasty. It's just going to be garbage. It's going to be a garbage weld. It's going to look terrible. You're going to grind that down. You're going to add a bit of, you're going to add new rod to the surface to build up that surface. Once you have that accomplished, then you can go over to your hard facing rod. If you start with your hard facing rod, which is your more expensive rod, by the way, than your 6013, you're gonna have a terrible time. I would not recommend going straight. You need a filler material between the cast and the uh, hard surfacing rod uh, in order for it to work out. So think of your first passes or your lower layer being your dirty welding. That's gonna be your dirty weld and then your hard facing, that's going to be your clean weld or your final surface that you're gonna end up doing. Now, I use Studi brand. Um, by ESOB, hard facing rods, they're self hardening rods. They harden anywhere between 52 and 58 Rockwell as welded, basically. Once you finish welding, they finish out about 52 to 58 Rockwell. And that's straight from their site. I will link that information up in the description down below, um, that little data sheet on them so you can check it out. I really like Studi Brands rods because they wet so nicely into the surface and it, they're really a smooth running rod. So that's what I use anytime I do hard facing. Again, I'm not, a, I'm not a professional welder or anything. And so these rods end up making me look like I'm a professional welder. So again, they're really easy to use and, and they're a nice addition. So those are my recommendations. Of course, I will have affiliate links to everything. Uh, you know, this YouTube thing is kind of a bit, bit of a business here, right? You know, gotta pay for these videos somehow. There will be some affiliate links down in the description down below where you guys can go check out the exact brand of rod and all of that business um, and read up on it for yourself. Go do whatever else you like to do. But those are my suggestions because that's what I use in my shop. All right, let's get on with the testing, will we? So the very first test I'm gonna work on is I'm actually gonna use these Subason Rockwell hardness tester uh, kit that I have. You guys have seen this in almost every single video. I'm working at eventually buying a digital one of these the, where I can actually, uh, you know, test things more accurately. The scratch text test method is pretty accurate for my liking, but for a lot of YouTube commenters likings, it's not as accurate as they would like. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, I guess I'm going to start at the top end, the 65 Rockwell. And mainly being because I know the 40 Rockwell is not going to touch it right off the gate. 
and that skates on the, well, that doesn't skate, it grips the surface a little bit as it goes through there, which obviously you would think it would. I'm gonna go down to the 60 Rockwell. Again, cuts the surface. And in this video, I went in ahead and polished this anvil surface. Now, unfortunately, I only have two camera angles set up. Otherwise, I wish I could get one that's a top down so you guys could see better. Hopefully that'll be in the budget here in 2022. All right, we're gonna go with the 55 Rockwell. Skates, that is skating not even touching the surface, not even in the slightest, not even the slightest, a little scratch there. So that's at 55 Rockwell. So true to what's on the packaging and, and what they've uh, labeled it as. I didn't do any other heat treatment to this. I didn't temper, didn't do nothing with it. I, again, it's a cast iron anvil and then with this hard facing rod sitting on top of 6013. So there you go. No need in going down any further. 55 Rockwell we were able to get out of this. Uh, so that's pretty great. Now, you may say to yourself, the more critical of you out there, there's no way that's 55 Rockwell. Well, if you remember in our previous test where we actually tried to case harden this anvil, um, you know, I'll put that up right now. <laughs> we probably just made this anvil worse. All right, go ahead. Three, two, one. <laughs> All right. If you remember that uh, part right there, we actually made this anvil worse. So this anvil was as dead as silly putty uh, sitting on a doorstep somewhere. It was it was garbage. Uh, we I think at max we got a nine inch bounce out of it, um, which is pitiful in our testing rig here. So we're actually gonna do the ball bearing drop test now. I'm gonna set this on the anvil. I have to set it a little bit off sided a bit because I'm trying to aim for the center mass of the anvil. That's generally how we check all of the things. And then I'm going to do a ball bearing drop test. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. And we're gonna see what we actually get out of this. So in three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is something. That is something to be behold. In fact, I'm going to put this pin back around the opposite way here. That is something else. Let's, let's look at that again, folks. So this way, that's not no fluke there. One, two, three. That has not happened on any of the Harbor Freight anvils that I've tested so far uh, with any of the methods that I've done so far uh, to try to make a better anvil out of them. Uh, that reoccurring, not only the initial bounce height, but the reoccurring bounce height. Three, two, one. We are clearing nearly 15 inches, depending on the bounce. So about a 15 inch return on a two foot pipe uh, from this uh, from this Harbor Freight anvil. So I would say that that is definitely hard enough. It's got a pretty good return to it. I will probably do some other videos on this once I complete kind of some of this series where I actually do some forging on this booger and, and see how it holds up, you know, so. Now that's not, that's not secured down by anything, but it is sitting on top of the anvil top here. Um, so, you know, it does have the extra weight of Olga underneath it there. Uh, it would do better if it's actually mounted so securely. That way with the hammer blows, the an anvil isn't jumping up off the other anvil. Uh, that would be beneficial. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, I am absolutely blown away and shocked at the result. <laughs> I'm absolutely shocked at the result on this. Um, you know, first off, I didn't know if I could weld to the cast and, and do it in that way without having some special rod uh, to do so. Again, 6013 is not overly special. I, I've you know, you could probably get it done with 7014, maybe even 7018. I don't know, but I know the 6013 did well. And again, it looked like poo poo. <laughs> it just looked ugly as sin. And then ground that off, ground that down. It was porous. It had a bunch of ugliness in it. And then went ahead and surfaced it with the hard surface rod and grind it all down. And uh, we've actually got 
pretty darn usable anvil at this. Is this going to be, is this going to be a good substitute? For a much nicer anvil out there, well, you're just going to have to be the judge of that and how you work in your own shop. I would say uh, this is a great option. Uh, this is a great route to potentially take if you're a few years out from actually being able to buy, uh, you know, a really nice anvil. Um, so that's my thoughts on the subject. Feel free to agree or disagree down in the comments section down below. And please tell me what uh, questions you have in the future, some other videos that you would like to see around this. Uh, I don't mind doing them and testing them out. No one else is online is going to do it, so I might as well, right? All right, that's it. God bless each and every last one of you. Thank you to all the channel members who make the content on this channel possible. I couldn't do it without you folks. And if you enjoyed this content and you'd like to take and support us, you could do it in that way with the, the join button, or you can just do it with the subscribe button. Uh, those are some great ways of doing that. Also, we sell blacksmithing blanks over at blacksmithingblanks.com. You could go check that out if you're just getting into this and you're looking for some fun projects to make. Um, we sell everything from skillet blanks to flower blanks to you name it um, over there. So that's it. God bless. We'll catch you on the next one.